What is SKSE64? Should you use it? And how do you install it? These are the questions I'm going to answer in this video. Now, before we start, I would like to point out that this video is aimed at people who are fairly new to modding and are perhaps uncomfortable or nervous about using something like the script extender. If you're a veteran modder or you're pretty comfortable with this sort of thing, this video is probably not tailored for you. If you want to just skip to the installation part, you can check the description down below and it will have timestamps for all the different sections. So having said that, what is SKSE64? Well, it's the script extender for Skyrim Special Edition, and script extenders are a special type of mod, a tool that allows mod authors to create far more powerful mods. It basically lets them do things that they would not be able to do otherwise. And if you look back at previous Bethesda Gaming Studio games, you will see a lot of mods that require the script extender, and it's become so commonplace for people to use it, I would almost consider it the defense a way to run a modded PC game from BGS. And that brings us on to the next question, which is, should you use it? And the answer is probably. Now, if you check the site and it's already in beta state, then the answer is yes, you should definitely use it. But at the time of making this video, it was in alpha state, which means it's aimed more at mod authors to test out. However, I can tell you there are already a lot of mods using it, and there will be a lot more mods that are going to use it. If you check out previous games, you will just see how essential the script extender actually was. It is, though, in an alpha state, and if you use it, you're going to have to accept some risk. You're going to have to accept that you are taking responsibility for it. I can tell you even though it's in alpha state, I would not dream of not using it because there are so many mods that need it and I need those mods. So again, it is a probably, unless of course it has been updated to the beta, in which case, yes, it's a categorical yes. If you're worried about safety, and you know what, that's a good thing. If, if you're thinking, can I trust this? The answer to that is also yes. The team that bring us the script extender are probably the most respected team in the modding scene, and they have always given us a quality mod, and we've never really had any problems with it. The only real downside to it is whenever the game gets a patch, you probably have to wait a few hours for the script extender team to update. And in the meantime, you'll have to run your game without the script extender, and that means without the mods that need it. And I'll tell you now, most of us just wait for the script extender to get updated and play something else in the meantime. That's how important that tool is to us. And just in case you're worried that it will hurt your performance or stability, you can rest easy. Quite the opposite is true. The script extender has traditionally given us more options to actually improve performance and help with stability. In fact, in some of the games, for example Skyrim, it comes with some tweaks that make the game a lot more stable and prevent things like crash on loads. But for many of us, the script extenders make the experience smoother, faster, and way more stable. So again, there really is not any reason not to use it, except it does require a little bit of learning to install. And that's what I'm going to move on to next. The first thing to do when installing this mod is to actually download it. I will leave a link down below to the site. It's very, very basic. And you're going to be looking for current SE build. At the time of making this video, it is 2.0.2. You need to take the very latest version and you should take the 7Z archive. You may see new options at some point in, in the future, which will give you installers and that type of thing. I do not recommend doing that. I actually recommend installing this via the archive. I will explain why at the end of this video if you are curious. So obviously the first thing I'm going to do is save this file to wherever's convenient for me, and for me it's the desktop.
Once it's downloaded, you can actually close this or minimize it and then go along to the 7Z archive. Now you will need a program to extract this. You could use WinRAR, you can use 7Z. That is up to you. I will leave a link down below to a few different options. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to extract to and I'm going to leave the name it suggests. And once it's finished, I can actually delete the archive. I don't need that anymore. All I really need is this folder. I'm going to open this up now. It will contain another folder called SKSC and a bunch of numbers. I'll go in there and I have a data folder, an SRC folder. This is the source folder. You can pretty much ignore that. And some files all beginning with SKSE64. The next thing I'm going to need to do is open up my Skyrim Special Edition game folder. Now, I've actually got a shortcut here. The Special Edition game folder is where the game is actually installed. For most of you, it will probably be on something like C, Program Files, and then Steam. I generally recommend having your games installed on a different hard drive. So I have mine in Games on the F drive, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Skyrim Special Edition. You are going to know you're in the right place if you can see two files, the Skyrim SE.exe and the Skyrim SE Launcher.exe. Don't worry if you see two files with this name, but they don't have .exe at the end of them. It probably means your operating system is hiding known extensions from you. That is not a problem. You're still in the right place. You'll also see a data folder. That's going to be important later. But this is how you know you're in the right place. Then, Select all of the loose files, that's all of the files that are not in a folder, and copy them across to this folder. That is the executables handled. The next thing we need to do is get the data files copied across. Now, you could just copy this folder into this folder over here the same way you did with the loose files. You could actually grab the whole lot and just copy them across. It's quick, it's simple, but I do not recommend doing it that way for safety reasons. I'm going to explain why at the end of this video if you are curious, but I highly recommend you do not copy the data files across. I always use a mod uh, tool, a mod manager tool to install anything to the data folder. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to minimize this for now and I'm going to open up Nexus Mod Manager, which is the mod management tool I am currently using. And I'm going to add the SKSE data files via this tool. And to do that, I simply go to data, I right click, and then I use one of the archive tools I mentioned earlier, again, links down below, to add to archive. I'm gonna just add to archive, and I'm going to change the name to SKSE64 underscore, and then I'm going to give it the same dashes as the actual file I downloaded. So that's two slash zero zero slash zero two in this case. And then I'm going to do underscore data. This is to indicate the data files. You can actually name this whatever you like. I just like to have all of the information in the uh, title of the file. Once that file has been created and it shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds, I can just drag it across to my mod manager tool. If you're using a different mod management tool, you may have to do that another way. I'm going to leave that up to you to figure out. You can also add mod from file and use Explorer to get there. However, I now have the data files needed in my mod management tool, and I will simply click the install icon, and those files are now installed. Believe it or not, the SKSE64 mod is now completely installed. I'm now going to minimize that and I'm going to close this. I don't need this folder anymore. My mod manager has all the files I need. Now what I need to do is run the game, but this is very important. You should not run the game via the normal launcher from now on. You, you can still run it and change some options, but from now on, if you want to play with the script extender features enabled, you're going to have to run skse64 underscore loader dot exe.
And indeed, because I do this so often, I'm going to want to set up a shortcut for it on my desktop. So I'm going to right click, send to, and desktop. Where is it? There it is. And I'm going to rename it because it's a fairly horrible name. I'm going to call it SKSE 64. And I'm also going to change the icon. That's pretty easy to do. Just right click, go to properties and under shortcut, change icon, click OK. And then you can browse. Now, it's probably easiest to find the executable and use the same icon. Again, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Special Edition, Skyrim. Find either of the executables with the icon and select that. And it will use the same icon. So from now on, I hit apply. OK, I now have SKSE 64 with the icon and I can run the game from there. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. As you can see, the first time you do that, you may get a warning telling you Windows Defender has prevented it from running or your virus checker has uh, stopped it. Go along to more info or however it is you add this to your safe lists and hit run anyway. And then it should run and look pretty much the same as usual. If you are using a variety of different security programs, I know some people have a lot of them, you may have to set this up as safe in a number of places. However, once you've got it running, I suggest you load up a save, any old save, and once in game, press the console key. It is usually called the tilde key, and depending on your country, it's usually the key to the left of the one key. You press that, you get the developer console, and then type in get SKSE version with no spaces, press the return or enter key, and you should see a message like that telling you which release it is. And you now know SKSE is running fine. And that's it. You've now got SKSE installed and you just need to run the game via that new shortcut each and every time. It'll become second nature before you know it and it really doesn't take any more time than going through the launcher. In fact, it actually usually takes one click less. One last thing is occasionally you will need to update SKSE 64. Don't worry, it's pretty much the same process. You're going to download the new file. You're going to copy the binary files, the loose files into the game folder. But of course, this time it will say, hey, you already have these files. Do you wish to overwrite them? And you just click Yes. The important thing is to do the same thing with the data file and you'll have a new data file with a new set of numbers. Disable this one and delete it if you want. You can uh, delete the mod permanently if you want and then enable the new one. It's pretty simple. Once you've done it a few times, you won't even think about it. Now, I did say that I would explain why I recommend installing this mod the way I install it, and that's what I'm going to do now. It is basically a security issue. If you install the data files via your mod manager, your mod manager will warn you if you try to tamper with them, and that is good. I'll show you by installing this bad mod. I've just made a mod that actually overwrites one of the SKSE 64 files, something that, as far as I know, there's almost no reason to do. And when I do that, it tells me that I'm trying to overwrite this file that's already been installed by SKSE. I now know I'm trying to overwrite a file that is very, very important. And indeed, at this point, my reaction is going to be a uh, no. And then I'm going to deactivate this for now. And then I'm going to go back to the page I found this. Hopefully on the page, on the front page of the mod, the mod author will explain why he is overwriting that file and tell you if it is compatible with SKSE or not and which version. And you can then make the decision as to whether or not you will use it. If you do use it, 
please understand when SKSE does get updated, you may have some problems. You may get some issues, which is generally speaking why I don't think mods should be altering those files. In fact, the only time I've ever seen mods overwrite those files are when a mod author has accidentally included those files with his download. It's almost, all, in fact, it's always been, every time I have discovered it, been a mistake, but it's a good mistake to catch. So what happens if you install the bad mod and you've got the files for SKSE installed manually instead of via the mod manager as I suggest? Well, pretty simply, very little. It doesn't give you any warning or, depending on the settings and the mod manager you're using, it will warn you but it will not tell you which mod the file comes from and ordinarily you would then assume it's a vanilla file and go on with your life. The problem with that is you have just overwritten an SKSE file that could be critical. You may not notice any problems, you may carry on modding your game and never see any problems whatsoever because none of the mods you use happen to use any of the files that are now wrong. But you may install a mod in six months time and it may not work correctly and your first thought is going to be, well that mod doesn't work. When in actual fact, it's your SKSE installation that is not working, it's not installed correctly. This is why any file that goes in the data folder, I always recommend you go via the same mod manager, one mod, mod manager to do everything inside data. That way you get this lovely little warning and you can run off and ask the mod author, yeah, is this intentional? And if so, why? Anyway, guys, that really is all there is to it. I hope the video was helpful and I hope you're going to enjoy Skyrim Special Edition even more now that you have access to some even better mods. Good luck with your modding and I will see you guys next time.